Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me here today. Appreciate all of our listeners, especially those who tune in on the weekends because this is where we actually get to your questions. So I know so many practitioners listen to the weekend edition of the show. I thank you as well because you are out there helping tens of thousands to maybe even hundreds of thousands of people around the world on your social media channels, getting education out, as well as your one-on-one appointments and more. So thank you all. I appreciate you. And uh, I do hope that in the future, uh, we get to meet in person. So, you know, if you don't already know about the Reimagining Health uh, event, check it out. I'm telling you right now, I would love to meet all of you, general public as well as practitioners doing this great work in the world, as well as on your own health journey yourself. So if you haven't heard about it yet, my personal invite to you, uh, especially all of the people who tune into the weekend show who really like to get deep into what the community is doing, this is a community event. It's our first live event, myself and about 16 speakers talking about all things health and wellness. It's, it's going to be absolutely amazing. And also the future of health. That's why it's called Reimagining Health Summit. So reimaginginghealthevent.com. We couldn't get Summit. It was already taken. Uh, head on over for more details there. All right. Looking, really looking forward to today questions. Just open up the document and uh, I say we get right into it. So first question, it looks like it's from Chris. Chris says, hi, Dr. Brawl. Absolutely love anything you do, you are doing for the world. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. I just have a question regarding silica dust. I work in construction and although I do everything I can to prevent inhaling the dust, it is extremely hard to keep myself from breathing in some form of dust every day. I know how deadly silicosis can be, and I was wondering if there, are, oh, there were ways that I could help get rid of any buildup of silica dust in my lungs. I was also wondering if there was a lab test that would indicate if I had high levels of silica in my body. Thanks for everything you do, Chris. That's a great question. Is there a lab test for silica? And I have never heard of that, and I never look things up on the show, but I'm telling you right now, I want to see if there's a lab test for it. Um, so let's just see for you, Chris, because I know how to look these things up fairly quickly, and so I will do that. Uh, let's see. It looks like there might be some blood gene expressions for it. How do you test for silica poise? There's no specific test. That is interesting. That was afraid of that. I was afraid of that, that they are not able to pick that up in the blood. Yeah, not till it gets to be something like tuberculosis or... or something worse. Hmm. All right, that is too bad. But I did want to check for that for you, Chris. And so what I can share with you is this. My opinion is, again, this is a reason, like this is a real reason that someone on a construction site may want to wear a N95 mask, right? So you can keep this out of your lungs. So when you're being exposed to this, you don't want those things in your lungs. Like that is why, you know, the N95 masks are made to be able to keep that out. And even if you're the only one on the job site wearing one, I get it, it can be, you know, a little bit odd and all that. But the truth is this, better to be safe than sorry. And when you start to explain to other people on the job site how, you know, Uh, breathing in large amounts of chemicals over time can be very toxic to your lungs. It's something to think about, right, in terms of COPD and, um, and other issues, right? So here's the thing, though. You can always be doing your detoxing. You can absolutely be doing your sauna and, um, you supplement with detox cofactors on a daily basis, like those in the daily nutritional support. We've got a daily product coming out in about three months from now. Uh, but also, you know, going and getting your aerobic fitness up as well. So you huff out all of that from your lungs. So I recommend, uh, yeah, I mean, I recommend the sauna. I recommend your daily nutritional support, whatever you're doing. I recommend um, doing aerobic-based fitness as well to, bre- to get all of that out of your lungs on a daily basis as well. And I don't think that you need a lot of time, but 20 minutes or so, uh, being able to go for a jog or something to breathe all of that out, I think would be you know, pretty fantastic. There are different other, there are other things that you can do, certain nebulizers, et cetera. I don't like to recommend those unless you're in the specific care, working with a practitioner or doctor, but it's certainly something that you could look into as well. All right, thank you, Chris. Tamara's up. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Can you tell me, is it safe to eat off Cornell brand plates and bowls? Thanks for all you do. I have no idea because I do not know what Cornell brand plates and bowls are. Uh, What I can say is that in general, if you are looking at regular plates, you want a ceramic 
base plate. Uh, no heavy metals, no chemicals. Uh, there, or if you're cooking, of, of course, I've given you all my cooking recommendations, the glass, the ceramic, the uh, what else? A stainless steel, even copper can be good for some people. Even uh, the old Dutch ovens, you know, can be good as long as you don't have higher levels of iron or, or cast iron. So those are all good recommendations. Now, if it's disposable, because again, I, don't, I apologize, I, I can't look up everything, you know, as I'm going through this, this is always 99.99% of the time. This is just me always giving you what comes to mind. But, you know, I didn't have that answer for, quiz, for Chris. And I can't do, um, you know, I can't look up every single product as we're going along. So, because I'd have to do a deep dive as well, right? And I'd have to find out, you know, what is Cornell brand plates, et cetera. So if it's disposable though, I actually use a recycled bamboo. So like, let's say we have a lot of guests over and we can't possibly, you know, if we have 10, 12 people, I don't think that we have serving for that many people, but we can use the sustainable, uh, compostable, the, yeah, they're compostable, not recyclable, and they are made from bamboo. And so you can find those right on Amazon or your local health food store should have the sustainable bamboo-based plates, bowls, utensils, everything. And they're, they're pretty fantastic. So tomorrow, hopefully that helped as well. All right, this one's from Amy. Amy says, hello, Dr. Brawl. I have a aura ring, but I feel like I'm not using it to its full capability. Where's the best place to find info on healthy parameters for heart rate, heart rate variability, sleep time, et cetera, thanks. This is a great question to ask. What I would do is, well, we've got a whole sleep section. We've got a high-performance health podcast now. So here's the thing. If you ask this question at cabralsupportgroup.com, Michelle or Daniel or one of our amazing team members can actually share with you certain episodes of the podcast that will tell you how much deep sleep you should be getting, how much REM sleep that you should be getting, what a good heart rate is in terms of beats per minute, and much more. So they can help with all that. And then if you love using biometrics and you love advanced, um, not only daily testing with these with these trackers, uh, but also you know the 10 vitality tests or mortality tests and much more, definitely check out High Performance Health. That's to go deep if you want, right? So that's highperformancehealth.org. But we'll help you however you want. You want to go deeper, that's highperformancehealth.org. If you want the, the basics and fundamentals, ask for free at cabralsupportgroup.com uh, and they'll get you the different podcasts, all right? So happy to help. All right, and then just, just you know, for a quick answer, the basis, like when you're looking at sleep, you want two hours of REM and you want 1.5 hours of deep, okay? And But I've got lots of detailed podcasts on that too. All right, Anonymous is up next. Hi, Doc, been gung-ho on the natural health for about five years, threw in 100% with you about a year ago and after binging on your podcast for a year, been through many of your protocols with some progress with my gut, still 100% committed to the protocols and living a a healthy lifestyle. I struggle with a lot of stress and anxiety and low mood. I had a six inch uh, fibro adenoma, uh, adenoma, I can never pronounce that, it's so good, uh, removed from my left breast in 2014, and lately I feel like it's coming back. Large lump on the back of my left shoulder 10 years ago. Also, with the last year, I've grown a mole grape-sized lump on the back of C6. Uh, for everybody out there, C6 is typically uh, vertebrae in the cervical vertebrae in the neck because uh, it goes cervix, cervical vertebrae, thoracic uh, lumbar, etc. So gut lymph dumping grounds, perhaps been working so hard following everything to the T. So why is my gut not healing? And what's with all these lumps, especially if the body regenerates within a year? Stress, I get so frustrated and scared. Thanks. These are all great questions. I appreciate you writing in anonymous. And what I would say is this, like you're on the path, right? You're working the path. So we still have to go to deeper underlying root cause levels. So before, I mean, I love that you're doing the gut protocol. I love that. But I've talked about this before. The only people that don't typically heal from the gut protocol, the CBO protocol, are those people with higher levels of stress. And the reason is that stress inhibits, slows digestion. It weakens digestion. It actually causes leaky gut and intestinal permeability. And by the way, that's scientifically proven. And so we need to go to a deeper level for you. 
So if you haven't read The Rain Barrel Effect, you probably have, but if you haven't read The Rain Barrel Effect, that's actually the first place to start. So true 21-day functional medicine detox, looking into the intermittent fasting at a healthy level, beginning to balance cortisol and stress levels, working on biofeedback and breath work and sleep so that you get your autonomic nervous system level balanced, so that you're out of fight or flight. Because until you get out of fight or flight, it's very difficult to put the body in a healing state. Now, I can't provide on the podcast any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis. But the one thing that we do for growths in the body, no medical advice, is we use the proteolytic enzymes in Florafilm by Ecolife. And they work really well. Uh, we use those for about two months. And you take two upon waking on an empty stomach and two before bed on an empty stomach. And you can find them just over at Equalife. They're called Florafilm, and it's called uh, proteolytic enzymes. You most likely already did the Florafilm with your gut protocol, which is great. So you may want to just focus on the two and two with the proteolytic enzymes. But also, don't forget the foundational approaches as well with the sauna, with the movement, uh, with the biofeedback, and really working on those stress levels. That's my recommendation. All right, thank you for writing in. Nicole is up next. Nicole says, hi, I've suffered from a strange vibration in my chest that comes with each heartbeat. It started a few months ago and initially, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> got to clear my throat there for a second. It started a few months ago and initially only in the evenings. Now I'm having it most of the day except when lying down and resting. More recently, I've developed some random come-and-go twitches in my legs, eyelid, arm, and vibrations that come-and-go in my ankle and hip. I've seen doctors run all sorts of tests, including the minerals and metals test, HTMA, and all look fairly good. I've been to a cardiologist who, after doing testing, diagnosed me with mild mitral valve prolapse, mild regurgitation regurgitation, that basically just means the blood coming back out where it shouldn't, and mild mitral valve thickening, which happens to basically everyone as we begin to age a little bit. Uh, but these things all seem very mild. Anyway, he says he's not concerned and I shouldn't be having these symptoms from it. My thoughts are possibly nerves have become sensitive due to recent stresses and maybe dysautonomia. What are your thoughts on this? Exactly correct. Again, I can't provide any diagnosis, but I'm exactly 100% on board with what you believe it is. And when people have listened to, you know, 500 or 1,000 of the Cabral concept, you can kind of understand where you may be at as well. You know, when where you're talking about, let's, let's let go of the chest vibrations for a minute, right? Let's let go of that for a minute. What also came, though, was the twitches in the leg, the eyelid, and arm. And the eyelid especially is stress. Sometimes lower levels of magnesium because you're going through more magnesium when you have high levels of stress. So I can't, you know, obviously prescribe you anything. That's not how it works. But my recommendations to people with stress is a lot like to anonymous above. We really want to look at carving out eight to nine hours in bed for sleep. We want to do activities in the day that anchor. So check out my three anchors podcast per day, morning, lunch, and then basically you know, at the end of the day, we need to calm the central nervous system. Looking at your heart rate variability is a great way to do this. Um, it's on my resources page at stephencabral.com forward slash resources, but check out the Hanu device. And that's going to actually allow you to track your HRV throughout the day. And the lower your HRV goes, the more stress that you have. And that's not going to allow you to, to really heal these things. And then my recommendation, um, you may want to run the stress mood and metabolism test to actually look at cortisol levels and stress. That's a big one. So um, after running that, uh, that test, you know, the biggest factors are the daily nutritional support, adding that in, the omega-3 support, adding that in, the full spectrum magnesium, adding that in, the adrenal soothe, adding that in. And typically those are used, the last two products are used, uh, one at lunch and two at dinner. Again, I can't give you specific recommendations, but I'm just saying like if this was, you know, my wife, she came in and, and I just had these specific symptoms and I didn't run any labs, you know, that's what I would, I would leave for her as well. So hopefully that's a good place to get started, Nicole. Appreciate you. All right, Allie's up next and she is our last question. Hi, Dr. Rawl. 
is it possible to heal from fluoroquinolone toxicity? Or is this something that can permanently damage mitochondria and therefore something that has to be managed for the rest of my life? I was, on, I was disabled by Cipro for six months and I can now walk short distances. I still have tendon and ligament damage in my neck, elbows, knees, and Achilles. I'll do anything to heal hot and cold therapy, supplements, moonlight, sunlight, or morning sunlight, diet changes, and more. Eager to hear your thoughts on this. So uh, for people who don't know, uh, the fluoroquinolones are basically broad-spectrum antibiotics that, like Cipro um, that uh, our friend Allie was just on, and they are very debilitating, and that's the issue. Like People go on strong antibiotics for bacterial infections, for Lyme, et cetera, and, and the doctors don't, they honestly, I, they're not doing this to harm you. Of course not. I don't believe that. But the problem with antibiotics, especially broad spectrum ones, is they have such devastating consequences for the rest of the body. So sometimes you need them to save your life, right? There's no doubt about that, right? But now where Allie is, it's time to rebuild. So the good news is, Allie, you can absolutely rebuild. Remember, I was on three years straight of antibiotics, decimated my gut, decimated my mitochondria. I, a lot of people don't know this, put me in a really dark spot. I had to stop playing sports, which I loved in high school my senior year. And I had to do that because it was embarrassing how bad that I got. I used to be pretty good at sports, but when you're on that much antibiotics and your body then starts to shut down, your body's so weak. And so I went from doing really well in, in sports like basketball and track, and I had no speed. Like I was then in the bottom 25%. It was, it was awful. I mean, it was absolutely awful. And I felt terrible. And so the good news is this. You can rebuild. There is something called mitochondrial biogenesis. Everything you named is actually part of the process. Read the rain barrel effect. Start with the foundations. If you can, run the big five. If you can't, run the starter kit, right? So that at least you can find out what are the vitamins and minerals you need at a base level. Is the gut functioning well? Because if you've been on antibiotics, it, it may not be, right? So you need to know about that. And so you just work the process. Everything you named is amazing. Yes, on all of those, but if you can, run the labs, you get a more targeted approach. So you can find all of these labs at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. You never have to work with our company if you don't want to. You can actually work with any naturopathic doctor that specializes in this or integrative health practitioner that you feel comfortable with, all right? So, Ali, keep on keeping on. You will heal. I look forward to seeing that success story soon. I really do. Uh, hopefully, you'll join us in October. You can actually share that success story with me because you've got about six months, right, before that. Maybe not six months, but close. And uh, and that that is a good amount of time to continue to see that progress. So, I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. And I will talk with you tomorrow where we answer more of our community's questions. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics that you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.